Hiya, I'm Ro, welcome to the show. Welcome back to the Autopsy Book Club, a show that combines my English student love of books and my true crime research passion. This week's warnings aren't quite as intense as last week's, thank goodness, but they're still there. And those are as follows. Murder, dubious consent, kidnapping, mental illness, and I guess vampires? So take a seat, pick up this week's book and enjoy your time in the book club. This week's case follows the story of English socialite Lucy Westenra and her British fellows Mina Harker and Jonathan Harker. The information collected in this case is from the diaries of the people closest to the mysterious event, as well as letters between Lucy and Mina that detail their personal experience of each other and the event. Honestly, it was confusing in some ways to put this together and do all the research for this episode as the sources have different points of view and do overlap in some places. Diaries, of course, do depict events through a series of personal interpretations. So a lot of accounts that make up this case are particularly emotive and some would argue unreliable. But despite this, they're all corroborative of the same events and the unfortunate circumstances that take place in this case. The first diary writer is Jonathan Harker, born in Exeter in 1859 to a middle-class Christian family. This diary is the most crucial to the case when Harker takes a trip to Transylvania. This trip is prompted by a large real estate purchase by a Romanian count which he is overseeing. Jonathan is granted this client due to his up-and-coming talent as a real estate agent in London. The second diary writer is Mina Harker, who was born in 1865 and is Jonathan's soon-to-be wife. She worked as a governess and personal companion to her closest friend, Lucy. Mina forged her way during her life as she set an example of a still feminine working woman. She worked two jobs, was bisexual, earned her own money and took everything at her own pace. This week, a hot new bombshell enters the villa. Lucy Westenra. She was born in an immensely wealthy family in 1817. She had partial bisexual leanings towards Mina, but becomes engaged to one of the lads I'm about to introduce you to. She was said to be an incredible musician, artist and socialite. She was very popular with the men in her life and often had multiple pending proposals at once. She unfortunately has the most upsetting ending of all all the characters in this case despite her joyous life. Next we've got the boys. <laughs> Lord Homewood, who's Lucy's fiance, is the most important of the bunch so I'm only really going to look into him in any detail. He was born in 1856 in London to a wealthy business family who handled the imports and exports of fabrics and spices during this period. Otherwise the rest of the lads are around the same age as Jonathan, born on average in around 1853 to 55 and they all met through mutual acquaintances and their love for Lucy. All of them at some point were engaged to or rejected by her. Penultimate character in this case is Van Helsing, the resident supernatural science expert. He was born somewhat mysteriously in Germany in around 1850. Not much is known about his young life and study. However, we know that at some point he studied medicine with one of Lucy's previous suitors, who at this point runs the asylum near Fairfax Abbey, which is the abbey that Dracula is looking to purchase. His advice is really the crux of this case and eventually leads to Jonathan and Mina's survival. He's been described as eclectic and an acquired taste, although his intelligence is undeniable. Finally, is the man, the legend himself. It's Count Dracula. Makes one um, ravenous. He is, I would argue, the key player in this case and the namesake for what the case is known as and the supernatural force that we'll be looking into as part of today's case. We don't know his exact date of birth, but we can take an educated guess and say some point in the 15th century. Um, As with Helsing, his young life is somewhat mysterious, although some accounts say that Dracula's parents died when he was very young and he joined the military. Others say that he had a first wife around 1750, but these are all generally considered speculation and not considered fact. The timeline begins with Jonathan travelling to Transylvania in order to finalise the purchase of Fairfax Abbey in the UK. The local people in this period appeared to be deeply superstitious and this puts him on edge. 
He writes in his diary that although he himself is a sceptic, he thinks deeply about the warnings he is given during his travels. He spends a few uneventful days in the company of Count Dracula, teaching him English and society etiquette in preparation for him to move to London. This, however, is very short-lived, as one night Jonathan discovers the sleeping body of Dracula in what appears to be a coffin. His diary does not go into great detail, before he recounts three mysterious women who sexually assault him in Dracula's castle and return him to the now awake Dracula, who, according to Jonathan's diaries, further assaults him and drinks his blood. At this point, chronologically, Lucy and Mina's letters and subsequent diary entries show that they went on a small holiday together, where they become somewhat romantically involved. This is more explicit in Lucy's writing. <laughs> she speaks of her mother's disapproval at the idea of bisexuality. It is perfectly natural for a woman to fall in love with another woman. For me and mean it. Lucy also begins to sleepwalk as she did in her childhood, which is a worrying habit for those around her. At this point, Mina has still not heard from Jonathan via letter and becomes concerned about Lucy when she becomes ill due to her sleepwalking. Simultaneously, Dracula and 50 boxes of Transylvanian dirt have been transported to Fairfax Abbey on a boat from Transylvania. Mina hears from her fiancé from a hospital in Budapest and they marry there while Jonathan recovers from mysterious blood infection. They arrive back in the UK and Lucy has become notably more ill and her fiancé has involved the, his friend Van Helsing to help cure her illness. Helsing suggests that Lucy is suffering from a lack of blood and uses supernatural and medical precautions to aid her recovery. Although this appears to be working for a number of weeks, Lucy unexpectedly gains strength and libido, leading her fiancé to feel rather concerned as this is deeply unexpected from her. Rightly so, as soon after this, she completes her vampiric transformation and flees. While attempting to locate Lucy, Helsing's former colleague, John Seward, also becomes concerned about his patient, Renfield, who appears at points to be under the influence of Count Dracula and begins to eat spiders and mice raw. <laughs> Glossing over the glory bits so that YouTube will keep this video on the platform, Lucy is found with a number of dead children that have disappeared over the previous weeks. She is then killed by fire by her fiancé and her head is cut off so she can finally rest. So, all is well, right? Wrong. Yeah. Jonathan and the lads travel to Fairfax Abbey to destroy the dirt Dracula brought with him as they realise that the home earth that is contained in the boxes is the only thing that Dracula can sleep on. They manage to destroy 49 boxes of them. However, Jonathan is alerted to the fact that Mina has been assaulted by Dracula and forced to drink his blood. So he runs home and sees her beginning her vampiric transformation. Jonathan despairs, but Mina encourages him to use her mental link to Dracula to track and kill him. They do so and make their way on a train to Transylvania. On the way, however, Mina gets worse and develops an aversion to religious items. Upon arrival, Van Helsing storms ahead and kills Dracula's brides before a fight breaks out somewhere in the grounds of Dracula's home where he is killed and Mina is freed from whatever mental state she was trapped in. Although with all that we've gone through, it seems quite apparent that there could be a slight supernatural element at play. There are some other theories as to what could be an explanation for the events of this case. Quite a lot of these ideas rest on the fact that Victorian medicine was not as developed as it is today, and possibly the lack of understanding of mental health that we understand now. Lucy's murder has been analysed by experts many, many times over the years, and many believe she suffered from a blood infection transmitted from a member of high society that had travelled back from a foreign country in recent weeks, then passing it on to Mina due to their closeness on the early holiday. This, however, negates the fact that others may, may have come close to her and did come close to her, and that they did not catch this mysterious disease. Another explanation put forward is that of mass hysteria. Notably, Jonathan's hair turns white during the events of this case. His Marie Antoinette syndrome shows the severe amount of stress he suffered and possibly leads into this theory. People also note on the subject of hallucinations that one or more of those involved in the case may have suffered from epilepsy or something similar. 
Frontal lobe epilepsy is often said to cause religious hallucinations, as stated in the Godhead theory, as part of the brain senses the other part of the brain and fails to register it itself. Therefore, whichever side is responsible for the sense of self then becomes confused and senses the other half of their brain as a religious experience or a spirit of some kind as opposed to part of itself. Some would argue that the sexual assault the Harkers faced forced them to monstrify the Count, who was a simple client of Harkers. Both of them shared their theories and speculations about a supernatural entity which was caused by the fear surrounding the East at the time, prompted by Said's idea of Orientalism, which reduced people in the East to fears of the West in order to allow people to perpetrate violence against them without believing they were truly human. They use societal factors, including this, and the fear of homosexuality in order to cope with their trauma. Mina specifically would have used the idea of the new woman as a scapegoat in which she could project her trauma. This means that as a woman, she was expected to do certain things and may have blamed her lack of femininity or lack of womanhood on that sexual assault, pushed that onto Dracula in a supernatural way. Harker, on the other hand, may have used the fear of homosexuality at the time as a scapegoat in a similar way. The man who collected all the diary entries from this case, named Bram Stoker, whom he himself was speculated to have homosexual leanings, and people think that he may have put forward Harker's series of events before others in order to project his own fears and his own personal sense of self. Therefore, we can make an educated guess and say in this example that Harker's fear of homosexuality and the way that society would view him if that was his identity was then projected onto Dracula who sodomized him and that is where the supernatural ideas come from. Supernatural fears at the time in a similar way to the satanic panic in the 70s and 80s was because of the new emerging style of the gothic novel. <laughs> This was putting forward everybody's cultural and societal fears into supernatural beings in order to present them in a sellable and kind of narrative way. This may have also added to Harker's um, experience as both of them were highly educated and well-read and as many psychologists have said, a lot of contributing factors can add into somebody's um, idea of trauma and possibly allow false memories to become apparent in their psyche. Thank you so much for coming to this week's book club. What I've learned from this case is that no amount of love for your best friend will save you from vampires and everyone in gothic period England was partial to homosexuality. I look forward to seeing you in the next book club meeting where we'll be looking at the idea of female rage and the way that female perpetrators manifest in modern times. See you then!